they also, I think, they're a little more advanced than we are with uh, learning how to use the attributes they have that's been given to them. And uh, if that is from alien influence into the genome of a primate, and that's what these things are, uh, they, they got some abilities we still try to understand, and it gets into quantum physics. That's why I try to explain that stuff in, in my book, uh, how they do what they do. And uh, if, if, this, if that's the answer, then I think I'm onto something. Yeah, and how how's that been received? At, uh, how's that been received uh, at different conferences? I mean, you you're kind of a legend, so I mean, you can you can you can sort of say these types of things, and and people still, you know, take you seriously. But I mean, other people who say this kind of stuff, uh, you know, it's uh, they're they're kind of thrown by the wayside. Um, so uh, is that something that you see people struggle with, and then maybe they 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 say to you, hey, uh, Ron, I had this experience and I really don't want anybody to know about it because I don't want anybody to think I'm, um, you know, yes, not. I, I, yeah. <clears throat> Kevin, I've had that so many times. People come to me after then. They didn't want to ask the question in front of all these people, but they'll ask it to me personally. I had a man and his wife <laughs> come to me and say, we've seen this thing, we've seen the, the grass going down, we heard it walking, but we never saw it. And, uh, because I talk about how it's it's actually possible for these things to go out of our perception. Now, that doesn't mean they disappear. We just don't see them. But yet, the sound frequency they're making is still with us. And I've had so many accounts like that that I stopped throwing them away. Because years ago, when I hear those reports about no one disappeared or the track stopped, I just discarded the. But I don't do that anymore because I had to have the meaning. My daughter saw one, uh, and gone his trackway and followed it and the tracks just stopped and when these tracks were going down the ground I couldn't even make an impression in the ground going down an inch and a half two inches and they stopped I looked up in the trees could have jumped up in the tree no could have jumped over to a boulder no jump over in the brush no I couldn't find where it went after that and when you see stuff like with your own eyes and you know you know, aliens have been here. <laughs> I just, I know that one. When you see the artifacts and stuff I've seen in Peru and South America, Bolivia, uh, there's no doubt left in your mind. The megalithic structures down there, 100 ton boulders are placed so uniquely up on top of 13,000 foot mountain. No more. They're cut out like a jigsaw puzzle. There's no human way we could do that right now, I think. And uh, yeah. anyway, you see that, you realize they're. There's some type of an alien influence, I think, into, into some of the enigmas we're finding with these things. And I appreciate your comment on what you said a minute ago about people respect what I say, so I have to be careful what I say. And I, I got a kind of a little bit of a deal tonight going on with my throat and everything, so you have to excuse me if I get off on a tangent. But, uh, just well, keep going with your is, question. To this is, fa this is fascinating <laughs> stuff here, Ron. You're you're doing really a wonderful job of keep getting us up to speed for sure. And, and Kevin, thank you for these pointed questions. This is getting down to the the bottom line of what uh, a, a expert uh, ufologist and uh, and basically Bigfooter, because you're you're a little of both there, Ron, uh, is kind of telling us about uh, what he thinks these things are. Have have you been able to? Uh, You've, I'm sure you've lived with these sounds and listened to these sounds. What are the first reactions when you uh, play these sounds, these Sierra sounds of Bigfoot, uh, for uh, scientists, for people that should uh, know something about this? Um, what are their reactions when they hear these? Well, academia has been trained within a certain parameters of discipline. So they, they, they've got their mind made up. If something like this exists, that it can't talk. <laughs> that's just, that's where the brain is. And they don't want to stretch outside their discipline. They lose their tenure. They love to lose uh, respect at their university where they're working. So Dr. Curlin lost, uh, lost a little bit of uh, something there when he did this study for us. And uh, I speak with these uh, guys at these conventions, and uh, they have a hard time getting a hold of this. They know something's going on. They can't argue with it because they're arguing with professors and professionals, you know. But they don't know where to put it. Uh, what what I know is that they they're unique and they're not 
to be underestimated. Whatever they are, they're something very special. And uh, I don't necessarily mean all of them are good. They're not. Some of them are malicious, and uh, there's been a lot of reports of that. <clears throat> uh, fortunately, I didn't get eaten. None of us got carried away in no a sleeping bag. Uh, we, we all came out of it alive. Uh, some of the guys have passed away now just from old age, and we're all going to pass away. I don't know why somebody, some of these academias don't, don't come in and uh, really drill me on this stuff because I'm one of the only ones that's had interaction with these things over a long period of time. And, and I, I'm an honest person, and I, I would I would be honest with them, but they got to believe me when I say it. And it's not just my interpretation of something. I've got this stuff recorded, and it's been a, uh, studied a lot. So you get that kind of stuff going on, and you wonder why it doesn't turn some more heads than what it does with the academia and the professionals. I have a PowerPoint program representing these uh, conventions I'm speaking at, which I'm speaking in Nebraska here a week after this one. And uh, that's why I was working on when you heard that sound while the cold first opened. Uh, and I explain this uh, kind of gradually. I, I go through the history of our sounds and the credibility behind it and the, and the people that did the work on it and all that. And and then I, I slowly get into it takes a human vocal mechanism to do this, yet it's outside the human range of vocalizations. So you start opening our heads up like that, then you, you can get into uh, the other parts of it, like what could they be? And they get into ancient texts, like, um, well, like Native Americans, even they say they live in two worlds. Well, how do they do that? Because they can go in and out of our three-dimensional environment. And uh, just uh, how they do that is, is I got my theories, but uh, we don't know for sure. There's a lot of things we don't know for sure. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I just keep pounding away at it, and I think I, I get a lot of attention because I try to do it in layman's terms, you know, the book and everything else, and when I get present my program, it's the same way. So I hope everybody comes. It's one in Hastings. I might point that right quick. It's Hastings, Nebraska, on the 15th of uh, February. And, yeah, uh, right. And, yeah, you'll be you'll be in Hastings, and then you're going to be around here too, uh, uh, and, and with and and Enumclaw, aren't you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got that on my calendar too, and then I'm going to Hanobi, Oklahoma again, and uh, a couple other places. I don't know. In between, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're always you're always busy, Ron. I mean, every time I look at your website, it's like Ron's Ron's in Colorado, Ron's Ron's here, Ron's. Ron's in Ohio. Yeah, I Ron's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like, but, I like Colorado. It, yeah. Well, I mean that's. I mean, like I said, though, when you were out in Colorado, that's I saw. I mean, that's where I had a had a sighting, and and uh, up in the mountains, it was it was eight, you know same 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 altitude, right about eighty five hundred oh. feet. And, and most Bailey? people. Well, it was it was over on the other side of Aspen, uh, by uh, Marble Marble, Colorado. Uh, you have to go to uh, Glenwood Springs and out past Marble up to the the Lead King Basin mines up there. I used to do Jeep tours up there. I know that place like the back of my hand, so I I knew that uh, there was no there was no place that anybody could park a car. I mean, they would have had to put a suit on, walk five miles at 8,400 feet. And you know how hard that is. Yes, I do. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, basically wait for me to, to come and uh, walk across the road, you know, at, at that, and that's, that's how it is. But it's interesting to listen to you and, and Peter Davenport have a lot of the same, issues in the fact that you know it's real you know that it's it, that uh, people won't uh, sometimes you you know you know people don't take it seriously or they think it's a joke or they think you know it's it's just one of those things that uh, is there and and as somebody who's been doing that for for i i went over peter davenport said 1973 was 46 years ago i actually realized how old i am but anyway <laughs> but uh you know, it's a funny thing to say. I mean, ha have you ever just thought of just saying, you know, that's it. I just, I just don't even want to talk about this anymore. Or have you, that, you know, my life is, uh, has, uh, you know, been in sort of uh, in a position of trying to convince people that this is this 
only to have people say, well, this is all just a joke or a hoax or there's one Bigfoot out there in the, in the woods? Well, you know, I, I, um, I haven't gone through that as much as a lot of people think because I've been a businessman. I've, been, uh, I, I've done pretty well and uh, able to fly my own airplane and go all over the world and do stuff that uh, most people don't have an opportunity to do. And uh, it seems like when I tell this the right way, uh, if, they don't, if they don't ask the question, they're, they're not ready for an answer. So I, I, I don't really push this on anybody. If, they, if they're not interested in it, I don't talk to them about it. And that's this way I've handled it all my life. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that think it's nuts. And in fact, I had somebody chime in and say, well, here's a, I'm talking about my book. It's the only bad report I got <laughs> on, the, on my quantum book. I said, well, some uh, guy who knows a little bit about physics is trying to uh, establish a mythological, mythological creature. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I know who wrote people, that. that. That person would you know say that about anything. I, that person would never. He would not have a kind word about most. Yeah, but it took my no. five. It took all my five stars down to four and a half when you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean that that but is anybody, one of those things. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> but it's it you you have to keep it in perspective, and and it's it's like Michael and I. Um, you know, we were we were up at uh, a place in Mount Adams, and and uh, as you know, uh, you've you've been close to Mount Adams. There's some strange stuff that goes on up there too. And, yep. and, uh, you know, we, we experience some things and, and we still don't know what it is, uh, you know, but it's a, it's an interesting thing where we, we do experience these things and we, and we have no idea what it could be. I mean, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're in the woods and something's rocking the side of your trailer. Uh, and and then you run outside and there's nothing there and 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 uh, you know so you you, ca- you kind of wonder, I mean how how does that work? I mean how did how is it that you see one footprint you know in the middle of a trail? It's like letting you know yes I've been here and there's nothing you can do about it, you know and 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 you can't duplicate it because <laughs> That's it's, funny, you know it, it, they yeah. toy with people all the time. These things toy with you and, and they they do stuff that that just to mess with you, I think. And uh, I think they mess with us up there because we always thought, you know, we're, we're trying to trick them. We'll put up this thread up here and we'll get a picture of this one. Sure as well, when he comes after our food tonight, he goes around another way. And it mm-hmm. just, uh, they they know what you're doing. They're very, very, uh, very smart and very attuned to their environment. Ke- uh, Kevin, you, so, you, you've got to, uh, Kevin, if you could, you got to tell Ron what happened to your trail cam on that yeah. Takalak Lake out there in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest when uh, when we were out there camping. That would be an interesting story for uh, Ron to hear. Yeah, it it was it was interesting. Now I I've uh, you know uh, we we Ron and I have mutual friends and have been to you know different places together and and I've listened to Ron uh, a lot and because uh, you hear you know he's a hero of mine. So this is actually it's kind of a weird thing whenever you're. When you're on on the uh, you know when you're interviewing somebody that you you know have have spent a long time you know uh, admiring and and that and that's why it was nice it, you know they say they don't meet your heroes because they'll always let you let you down but you know Ron actually is everything he says he is is a nice nice genuinely nice honest man and that and that and you know oh, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Well, no, it, but it it needs to be said, you know, that sometimes you you know you, you go out with some people and you and you and you come back and you go, I wish I hadn't done that, you know. But uh, you know, but uh, with well, so the, what's interesting about this, Ron, was is that uh, you know after reading this is after you you'd given Sam and I a copy of your your book at the conference and we had read it and and gone out through that, but I always figured that that. Uh, you know, if I'm going to go out there, I'm not going to be able to trick this this entity, whatever it is. I'm, not, I'm just not going to be able to. So I might as well just go out and just say to the woods, and I know that sounds crazy, but I always just say to the woods what I'm doing, which is I'm placing this trail cam out on the on this tripod. Um, if you want to have your picture taken, it's there. You know, it, it can't it can't hurt. It can't hurt to say that, even if it's an animal. You know. And so uh, I just I just 
talked to the woods and said, hey, 